So you could also predict the possibility for nitrogen. That would be nitrogen with a negative 3, because it's closest noble gas is neon. It would pick up 1, 2, 3 electrons. Phosphorus would form phosphide with 1, 2, 3 extra electrons, so it would be phosphorus with a negative 3. We won't deal too much with these other atoms in here, but the more common ones you'll see as far as monatomic anions, pretty much nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, oxygen, fluorine, all the halides here up to iodine. Okay. So in general, we could say that all of the group, all the halogens, we'll call them group 7, I know it says 17 up there, but the old way of calling these is group 7, all the halogens here in main group 7 form a negative 1 anion because they're 1 away from the noble gases. Group 6, main group 6 atoms tend to form negative 2 anions because they're 1, 2 away from the noble gases. Nitrogen and phosphorus in group 5 tend to form negative 3 anions because they're one, two, three away. So it's not really necessary to memorize every single atom in their charge. If you just kind of make sense of the positioning of the groups and the idea that they want to have noble gas electron configurations, I think that'll reduce the amount of stuff you have to memorize. If you just have that reasoning going and practice this. All right, well, we looked on the right side of the periodic table, which are the non-metals. Let's look over here on the left side to the metals. And this helium um, for this particular periodic table is placed here. So just for the moment ignore that it's here and imagine that it's over on the right side like most of the periodic tables are. So let's take a look at the main group metals, the main group metals lithium and sodium and potassium here. The closest noble gas to lithium would be helium. So, because if we walk backwards, we end up at helium. If we walk forwards from lithium, we would have to go through beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluoride, to neon. There's a huge distance, so to speak, a, a real long walk for lithium to get to neon. But it's a very short walk for lithium to get to helium, which is backwards. Walk one step backwards. If you're walking one step backwards, take a guess at what the charge of the lithium ion would be. If you're walking one step backwards, if you walk backwards, think about what happens to your electron count. Remember, lithium is going to be lithium, so it's always going to have three protons. But if it walks backwards to have an electron configuration like helium, it lost one electron. So let me clean up this board here, and we'll take a closer look at lithium. So lithium, neutral lithium, what it does is rather than picking up a, an electron, as you probably predicted, it loses an electron. From a lithium positive one ion. Okay. So I want to make sure we understand what's going on here. This is what we start with. And this is what we end up with. This is the resulting ion, which is a cation, the positive charge, and this is the electron that is lost. It's important we appreciate that this is lost because it's on the right side of the arrow. Okay, It's on the right side of the um, arrow here for the chemical equation. <clears throat> Let's add up the, up the charges here. Lithium has three electrons. Well, this is one electron here, we know that. 
And the lithium positive must have two electrons. So we have sort of what we could say an electron balance going on. So let's appreciate why lithium has two electrons again. Because it walked backwards and now it has the electron configuration like helium. Well, let's take a closer look. There is the electron configuration for lithium. 1s2, 2s1. And there's the orbital box diagram. It's going to lose that one electron in the 2s subshell to be like neon. I mean, excuse me, helium. So there's the electron configuration for helium. 1s2, and there's the orbital box diagram. So predict what would happen for sodium if sodium formed an ion. Predict if it would be positive or negative, and what would the charge be? Think about if it moves forward in the horizontal direction, it has to go through magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine to get to argon. That's one noble gas. Seems kind of far away. There's sodium again. Walk backwards. If it goes backwards from 11 to 10, it hits neon. Well, that's real close. So the closest noble gas and horizontal movement for sodium is neon. So we would predict it would have the electron configuration like neon, which has, has 10 electrons. There is the electron configuration for sodium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. If it walks backwards and becomes like neon, pay attention to this right over here, for the box diagram, it lost that electron. So let me erase this, and we'll account for that. So sodium. Right, yeah, like this, becomes sodium positive one plus one electron. Again, this means this electron is lost. It's on the right side of the arrow. So accounting wise, sodium has 11 electrons. Neutral sodium has 11 electrons. Sodium cation has 10 electrons, plus the one it lost, equals the total it originally had, 11. Let's take a look at magnesium. Magnesium is in the second group, or the alkali earth group. Well, magnesium has 12 electrons. There's the electron configuration. There's the orbital box diagram. Let's take a walk to the closest noble gas. If we walk forward, we have to go through all these main group elements to get to argon. If we walk backwards, it only has to walk through sodium to get from 11 to 10, which is neon. Well, what you would predict then would be if magnesium were to form an ion, it would form a positive or negative. I would say positive because we're walking backwards, and the charge would be positive 1, 2, 3, 4. It would be positive 1, 2, because we're walking back 2. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let me erase this. Well, maybe not. I'm going to leave that there just for comparison's sake. So magnesium. forms magnesium 2 plus and it gave away two electrons lost electrons and if we do an, an electron accounting magnesium originally had 12 electrons and if we agree that magnesium 2 plus has 10 electrons which is the same electron configuration as neon, write 10 electrons, plus the 2 that it lost, and that equals the 12 that it originally had. It's kind of neat. You can see there for that the sodium ion has 10 electrons, 
And the magnesium ion has 10 electrons. Well, that means we're going to have the same electron configuration, and that is of neon. Why is that? Because neon is the closest noble gas to both of them. So let's summarize what we've seen here. Main group elements will make horizontal walks, the forwards or backwards, to the nearest noble gas to form their ions. Group 1 and group 2 will always form positive ions because it's quicker, if you will, for them, or easier for them to walk backwards to the preceding noble gas than it would be to move forwards to the next noble gas. So all these folks here, group 1 and group 2, are going to form cations, or positive ions. And more specifically, all the group 1s are going to form a positive 1, because they only have to walk back 1. Group 2 will always form positive 2, because they're going to have to walk back 2. And if we move over here to the far right, we made some generalizations about nitrogen and phosphorus, that it's closer for them, or easier for them, to move forward to neon and argon. So they form positive, I mean, excuse me, they form negative 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Negative charges on them. Oxygen and sulfur are going to form negative 2 because they're moving forward two places to the corresponding noble gas. And the transition metals and the inner transition metals will form positive ions because they're metals but they're not as easily predictable. So we'll work with them in the next video.